spin. What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I'ma give is a gift. If I'ma live it, I'ma live it. Yeah. Everybody, we are here in the Garden of Gethsemane. Well, it feels like it. We are underneath the fig trees of All Souls Garden. And I just imagine that this is the place where Jesus used to come and pray. It was his favorite place where he would come and be with his father. And isn't it amazing that this was the same garden where he said, Yes, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. And this is where the journey to the cross began. But today we remember the good news that though Jesus died on the cross, he rose again for you and for me. And that's why we celebrate Easter is because he is alive and he has made a way for us to be with Daddy God so that we know we have eternal life with him. Isn't that much to celebrate? He's alive today and he's alive and with us through his spirit. Why don't you turn to your mum or your dad or to your cousins, whoever's watching with you today, and say, Happy Easter. Jesus is alive. Can we say that together on the count of three? One, two, three. Happy Easter. Jesus is alive. <laughs> Jesus is alive One, two, three Jesus is alive He died for you and me But on day three Jesus rose again Jesus is alive One, two, three Jesus is alive One, two, three Jesus is alive He died for you and me But on day three Jesus rose again, Jesus is alive God loved the world, so he gave his son Jesus is our friend, he loves everyone
This was the best and the greatest gift that God could ever give us. And he gave us his life. When darkness filled the sky, the day that Jesus died. I bring a stone into the Remembrance Garden because this is where we come and we gather our stones. In the old days, people used to gather stones to remember something significant and they would place it on the altar. Here at All Souls, we like to remember the people that have gone before us, who were precious to us, like our grandfathers or our uncles. And we take those precious stones and we lay them on the altar to say, Lord, we'll never forget them. But today we have something extra special to do as we lay down our stone. And that is to remember the great story, the greatest love story ever told of what God did for us on that cross. And how he came alive again to rescue us, the greatest rescue plan ever. To save us from our sins and to set us free from them. So that we could be just like Jesus on this earth. That we could be powerful and we could live purposeful lives with him at the center. So boys and girls, we're going to go back to the very beginning and we're going to take a look at that story. Won't you join me in the Garden of Remembrance today? And let's look back to 2,000 years ago where it all began. God's Story, Easter. So part of God's story is about Easter. And it begins like this. You might know Easter as the Sunday a ginormous bunny hides chocolate inside plastic eggs. But Easter is really all about how much Jesus loves us and how God sent him to rescue us. Remember how the Jews, God's special family, were waiting for a king to come rescue them? Well, Jesus was the king and this rescue was the whole reason he came to earth. God had already rescued the Jews once before, but this time it was going to include everyone. So one night, Jesus told his friends about the rescue. Exciting, right? But talking about this rescue was sad. That's because Jesus was going to rescue the world by dying. Kids, every mean or bad thing we do deserves punishment. By dying, Jesus took our punishment. Lots of things in life have good parts and bad parts. And just like candy bars are mostly good, as long as you brush your teeth after you eat one, this story is a really good one. Anyway, talking about the rescue made Jesus sad since he didn't really want to die. Thankfully, we can talk to God when we're sad, so Jesus took a few friends into a garden to pray. In the garden, a guy named Judas, who people thought was Jesus' friend, came with some people to help arrest Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' true friends, was so mad he cut off a servant's ear with his sword. But Jesus didn't want his friends to hurt others, so Jesus healed the ear and let them arrest him. Then Jesus was taken to trial. One of the most powerful men in the city, Pontius Pilate, wanted to let Jesus go. But many of the people wanted Jesus to die. They didn't believe he was the Son of God or any kind of king. Even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing sick people and making blind people see, they didn't believe in him. The people were so mad, they started yelling, kill him! So Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus. The soldiers made fun of the idea that Jesus was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed him to a cross. Many people watched, but not all of them wanted Jesus to die. His mother and close friends were there too. Just imagine how they must have felt. Once Jesus was up on the cross, the sun stopped shining for three whole hours in the middle of the day. But those soldiers kept right on making fun of him. They said, if you're really God's son, why don't you just call on some angels to save you? Jesus could have called on angels to save him, but he loved us so much that he wanted to rescue us. So instead, he prayed to God, Father, I place my life into your hands. At that moment, Jesus died. When he died, the soldiers who had just killed him realized he really was the Son of God. Later, Jesus was put into a tomb and a big rock blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends thought that was the end. 
But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. Don't worry, Jesus could get out on his own. The angel moved the rock so everybody else could see the tomb was empty. Jesus' friends were the first to stop by the tomb. The angel said, He has risen! Which is another way of saying, Jesus is alive! Nobody could believe it! Jesus took our punishment and then proved He really is the Son of God by coming back to life! Now, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the wrong things we do because Jesus already took our punishment. And that's the story of Easter. But that's not all there is. Here's a quick version of what happened after the angel told the good news. Jesus' friends got scared. Jesus appeared to them. They saw his scars. It was really him. Now they could share the good news too. Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. He went back up to heaven. And the best part? He promised to come back someday for everybody who follows him. And all that is a part of God's story. This is our story of Easter. Jesus is really cool. Jesus looked after people. He did some incredible miracles. He's basically like Superman, but he's like, he's dressed in different clothes. Jesus said he was a way for everyone to be friends with God, and some people didn't like that. One day, Jesus went to Jerusalem and got his friends together for a special supper. Jesus even washed his friends' stinky feet and taught them something important that we should love each other the same way he loves us. Jesus said, eat this bread and wine and remember me. And they sang their favourite song. Later on, Jesus went to a garden to pray. His friends went too, but they fell asleep. Jesus prayed and talked with God, his Father in heaven. They had a plan together to save all the people in the world. Then suddenly soldiers came to arrest Jesus and took him away. His friends were afraid and ran off. The leaders asked Jesus, Are you the Son of God? And Jesus said, Yes. The leaders didn't like that. The soldiers hurt Jesus and made fun of him. And they gave him a little hat, was like spiky to hurt his head. And they gave him a big heavy cross to carry. And they pinned him up on his hands and feet. Some people shouted at Jesus. If you really are God's son, then just climb down. Jesus could have climbed down. He could have made it stop, but he stayed there. Because he loves us, it was all part of the plan. Then Jesus died. And Mary and everyone cried. The sky got really dark. The sun couldn't shine. Maybe because the badness was all in it, making God feel sad. They put Jesus' body in a tomb. And they pushed a huge stone in front of the door so no one could get in. Three days later, God sent an angel from heaven. When the soldiers saw the angel, they got scared and ran off. Then the angel rolled the stone away. Then some of Jesus' friends came to the tomb to wash Jesus' body, but the tomb was empty. And they saw the shining angel who told them, Don't be afraid, Jesus is not here. He is not dead anymore. Jesus is alive again. Friends rushed home to tell everybody. But Mary stayed a bit longer. She thought the gardener was coming to talk to her. But it was Jesus. A few days later, Jesus' friends were all together having dinner. And then Jesus appeared to them. 
They were a bit scared at first, and then they got very excited. And Jesus explained the plan, that now nothing, not even really bad stuff, can separate us from being friends with God. Hundreds of people saw Jesus before he went up to heaven. And now we can call heaven home too and be with him when we die. Jesus is alive and he's there in our hearts. That's our story of Easter. But it's still not the end of the story. God loves me. And he loves you. God loves everybody. And he wants us to be his friends. remember all that God has done for us let's close in prayer now let's join hands or arms or elbows with whoever sitting next to you and it's a sign that Jesus was not just on your side but he is on their side too he chose to die for all people whoever should love him who should love him back and love him with all of their hearts this is the promise of God that God died because he loved us so much that he didn't want anybody to perish, but to have everlasting life with him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you were faithful, that you were obedient, and that, Lord God, you came to save us, to rescue us from our sin. We don't know how to be good. We don't know how to be the best that we can be. But we know that you, Lord, by the power of the cross, have made us blameless and holy holy we are your redeemed people lord which means that you have taken all our blotchy blackness away that was inside our sinful hearts and you've given us a heart of flesh you've given us a white clean slate to start again and lord even when we sin and even when we make mistakes lord god you don't look upon those sins anymore you look upon your son jesus and when you see the nail-pierced hands and the blood on your son, Jesus. You reminded that what Jesus did was enough. And so, Lord, thank you that we don't have to worry about sin, that we don't have to worry about falling short, because you, Jesus, paid the full price. You signed the full check. You paid with your credit card the entire debt that needed to be paid for our lives. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that amazing gift. We will never know how much it cost you, Lord, to give your life upon the cross. But today we say thank you, Jesus, for the greatest gift we could ever receive. And all God's children said, Amen. Guys, we've been playing with our Lego. And we've made the Easter story. This one's mine. And this one's mine. Now, here is the donkey that Jesus rode on. And that's Aaron's donkey that Jesus rode on. Here is the table where they had the feast. And here is the wine, which represents Jesus' blood. And this is the bread, which represents Jesus' body. This is the towel that he put around his waist to uh, wash the disciples' feet. And this is the tub that the water was in. This is Jesus' cross in the middle of the two thieves that were on either side of him. This is the tomb with the stone that was rolled away and the angel real rolled away. <laughs> There's also a bed in here that he was, um, that Jesus was put on to lie on when he was in the tomb. This is the lamb on the altar. And here's Simon Peter. And here's the crow. This is the palm leaf that they waved, um, and put in front of Jesus when he was riding on the donkey. And this is the, <coughs> sorry, the soldier that, Ju that sold Judas 30 pieces of silver so that he could, they could arrest him. And he's holding a sword. 
How about you find your Lego set and make an Easter story? You can use anything in your house that can tell the Easter story. You can use Duplo. If you have Duplo, you can use Lego like we did. If you have Lego, you can even use Play-Doh. Even if you have paint, you can use paint. Uh, you can use toothpicks for the cross. And you can even make an Easter garden. Happy, Happy Easter! Easter! When darkness filled the sky, the day that Jesus died, in agony upon the bitter cross, they took his body down and laid it in a tomb. His friends believed that everything was lost, but when the Jesus rose that day. 